morning, everybody. It's uh, Monday, July 17th, and I'm pretty darn excited about today's show because you're going to learn about the quilt index, and it's a pretty phenomenal thing at our fingertips that you will hear about. But in the meantime, it has been hotter than the hinges, and so I was looking for, you know, just kind of crazy dumb things to start with and I and I found three that work together just fine so love this typically I think she does a lot of um, quilty cartoons uh, this heat wave is brutal not only is it hot enough to fry an egg on the sidewalk but you can use your mailbox as a toaster oven love it love it yeah it's it has been hot here uh, not like Texas no not, not like Texas <laughs> Poor Justin and Lilo live in Texas. And so I thought that was pretty darn funny. And then, and then, flip-flops for Texas heat. <laughs> hey, we have you covered, okay? We have you covered. So I just, I just... I just thought that was fun. Okay, so before we get into today's recording, which was really fascinating, uh, I had a sew weekend with my girlfriends. Um, we went over to Robin's house, and there were five of us. I'll show you what I worked on, all right? Um, here we go. This is what I worked on right here. I got everything stitched down, and now, like, on ish, that middle green flower, you can see I'm doing around the edges, and what this is, of course, are dandelions with the poof thing to the left, of which I don't know what I'm going to do, but it will have a lot of embroidery on it. And in the spirit of threes, I couldn't figure out where to put the third leaf, so I thought, a frog. That's cute, okay, right? But here's the thing. There were a couple things there that just... Um, really caught my eye, and I want to start with uh, Cindy Needham. Cindy, you know, she does all the beautiful work with the antique lace and, and this and that, but Cindy has a retreat in McLeod several times a year, and I guess there's an antique shop in that area, and she secured this tablecloth, and it is pristine. We figured probably it was like in the 30s maybe. So let's take a look up at, look up, a close up of the flowers. I mean, they are extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. So I think Cindy said she snapped it up for 40 bucks or something like that. And so here, so now it, if I'm a, if I'm a tablecloth in Cindy's realm, I'm going to run and hide because Cindy is surely going to take her rotary cutter to it. So at her retreat, she started working on it and started deciding where she was going to cut. I don't know. I, this, this makes, this makes me shiver. Okay. Absolutely makes me shiver, but she did. And she does this during her retreat and that's where she's entertaining 35 people or whatever. So Okay, there she's marked it, right? And Cindy, thank you for sharing this with us. And then the big blade comes to it. Okay. And then the design wall. This is really, really important. She brought this. She wanted all of our opinions. I don't know why she needs our opinion because she's the rock star of all of this. But without a design wall, it's really hard to do things that are unique and by itself. And when we're on our tie project coming up, we will, you're going to want some sort of design wall. All right. So she put it on the design wall and then I want, and she wanted something long and skinny, not square. Note what she did on the top. Okay. Let's look at this. I don't know whether that's the shadow of the table. That's the yellowing down below. But because this was used and loved, it is not starch white, right? But if you look, she's like doing, what are those called? Rails across the top. And that brings in a different texture. So let's take a look at that. I just, I would have never 
ever thought of that in one 10,000 years million. And that's why it's so important that we share our things. So here's the other thing. The tablecloth came, I think, with eight little napkins. And she was trying to figure out where to put these little poppies. Let me see if I go back here. No, let me get rid of the poppy right here. Where would she put them? And honestly, it, it just was not working. It, it would just look like, I don't know, weird. So they're being saved for something else. So what is Cindy going to do? Okay, look at that. And I love the staining on it because it shows, and the, and the difference of the colors of the white. So what Cindy is going to do is in the blank areas, she is going to replicate the sewing, the quilting of the poppies. Now, what you need to know is on Cindy's Facebook page, Cindy Needham, she got home yesterday and actually put up on her Facebook page how the quilting is going to be. So I was like blown out when I saw it. So Facebook, Cindy, C-I-N-D-Y, Needham, N-E-E-D-H-A-M, Needham, Needham, just like it sounds. So when we get done with that, you are going to want to jet over there and take a look, see at what she did. Now, okay, now what is this up here? Okay, but, but oh, okay, so I'm obsessing on that only to have her pull this out from her suitcase. <laughs> I believe I heard this secondhand game of telephone that her daughter gave her this exquisite linen for Christmas birthday or something like that. So what Cindy is doing now, I mean, I've taken her classes on the fills and all that. Let's look at the top center, like 12 o'clock. Those are from folk art applique images. That's what those are. So she's quilting that in. All right. Let's go take a upsee of that, a close look. And oh, my buddy's in here. She's my buddy was out all last night. Now she's trying to drink from my water. Go away, cat. Go away. So look at those birds. Now notice and the flower. Okay, let's take a really good look, see at that. Because now after she's quilted. She's going in and adding stitching to it. I mean, isn't that the best? Even the little on the right-hand side, the birdie, the limb has just like a little, you know, quilty thing, a little quilty stitches, big stitch. And I asked her on the, on the back, it's pretty hard to hide a French knot on the back of a quilt. I mean, it just is because you've got to go all the way down. Did it bother her that the back was going to have all these threads and stuff? And the answer was no, not at all. Okay, there's that. I mean, the more you looked at this, the more you just kind of lost your flipping mind. All right. So see those little berries? Let's take a look at the next one. That is a blanket stitch or buttonhole stitch, buttonhole stitch with a French knot in the middle. I mean, this could go on and on and on. And I'm so glad that she's doing this because it's just extraordinary. Then Wendy whipped this out, all right? Why is my phone trying to talk to me? I don't want to talk to you. Okay. Okay, look at this when she pulled this out. And, and the joke of this was it all just starts with a chain stitch. So let's say that dark green, that is a chain stitch that she's whipped around. I mean, she just, it, 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 she's got chain stitch, lazy daisy, upper right, French knots, and straight stitch. It all just starts with a stitch, which, let me go back here. I said, well, that looks like there is a chain stitch underneath this, the um, salmon colored thing. And I said, well, that looks like you got in there and crocheted. And she said, well, I kind of did with a needle. I'm going, oh my gosh. She is a master with thread and um, ribbons and all that kind of stuff. So, so, okay, let's all admire my frog. <laughs> yes. yes, let's just do that. I was with the pros, okay.
<laughs> so let's get into the quilt index. This is just absolutely fabulous. What is going on at the University of Michigan? You're going to love this. Hey, Marsha. Finally, we've worked it out. Great. Brand technology, technology, it got to us, but we figured it out. And I'm ever so grateful that you're here because I was not really that familiar with the quilt index. And I feel a little shamed about that, but I feel blessed that we can tell people about it. So, so how long has it been around? 20 years, two decades. Yes, it, it really launched uh, in 2003. So, you know, it's been around, but don't feel badly that you didn't really know about it because we, um, we don't have a PR firm. And secondly, we've been working on a lot of things that have enhanced it. And it's only been about two or three years ago that we launched a whole new iteration of it, which makes it immensely more accessible and easier to use. Now, in setting this up, I asked you how many quilts are in there in this index. And you said now 90,000, but you hope by the end of the year, 100,000? Well, yes. This this seems or qu quilt related, I'll say, right? Or Correct. quilts. Uh, there are some exceptions, and I can highlight those as we talk. Okay, okay. So, people, that's what we're going to do today. Um, I want to know a little bit more about you, Marcia, before we get going. But basically, we're going to give you cliff notes on how to navigate this incredible site. And if you think Pinterest is bad, watch out. <laughs> this is a rabbit hole that you can go down. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole. So, so Marsha, where do you work? What do you do? And how did you become involved? Okay, so um, I'm a professor in art and art history at Michigan State University. I'm also the curator for folk arts and quilt studies at Michigan State University Museum. But my hat for this particular purpose today is that I'm the director of the Quilt Index, a digital humanities resource that is based at a digital humanities center at Michigan State University called Matrix, the Center for Digital Humanities and Social Sciences. Okay, so so when did you become the, the leader of the pack on this? Well, I was uh, on the board of the, uh, the Alliance for American Quilts, the founding board, and this was an idea that the board was tossing around as how can we collectively do something that would put forward, advance an idea that actually had been incubating for a while amongst mm -hmm. a number of individuals? And I will, would give a, a shout out right now to Shelley Ziegert on that. And um, so Michigan State University had this Digital Humanities Center. I was the director of the statewide quilt documentation uh, project in Michigan. And then also I was interested as a scholar in quilt studies. So oh. Michigan State had sort of the intellectual and management uh, capacity to help bring this to fruition. Okay. So everybody, what I want you to do is just put on your seatbelt because we are going <laughs> to Marsh is going to try and demystify it. And I would say when we're done with today, get on it and start scooting around. Um, exactly. I want to say one thing. Many times when I go to make a quilt, I will go to antique quilts before me and get inspired from them. And I mean, yeah, it's here, right here, right here. So are you ready to go? I'm ready. If you're okay. ready. All right. Here we go. We're going to tell you about the Quilt Index, and the website is www.quiltindex.org, right at the top of the slide. Oh, there it is up there. Okay. And I'm getting inspired by that drunkard's path. All right. <laughs> yes. So I log on, and here I am in the rabbit hole. Yeah, so this is just to give you a little sense of the origins of this project. And, and I already said it was an idea 
bringing up from the Alliance for American Quilts and, and again, Shelley Ziegert and some other voices. Um, what happened was all of these states across the country were engaged in doing these quilt documentation projects. And most of those projects were paper projects generating thousands and thousands of inventory sheets and photographs of quilts, I meaning tens of thousands of, of documentation records. And the, the question was, okay, why is that? Where is all? Where are all those records going to go? That's How will you access to them? Otherwise, it was would have been a wasted effort, and I have to say, a wasted effort by tens of thousands oh, yeah. of volunteer documenters. California, California did it, and I mean, so was the wasn't the Kentucky that we just showed the the book of? Was that was the first one, wasn't it? It wasn't exactly the first one, but it was the first one that really, I think, codified how okay. documentation days okay. were going to happen. Uh, but yes, it was it was one of the first. There were a couple of precursors to it, but yes, it will credit uh, uh, Kentucky with really providing the leadership for the model. Okay, so here's the next, all right. Yeah, so here- Oh, you gotta update it. It's now, it, you're off. You're off 50, 56 things. <laughs> 46, 46. 46. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did say roughly 90. <laughs> so, and actually, I think I, I put this together a couple of weeks ago, so I'm sure there's at least one more record in there. <laughs> so essentially what the Quilt Index is, is like it's, it's a tool for providing access to the records that are either documentation records, like I mentioned, or research projects by individuals, or providing online access to museum collections that normally might only appear on their own individual museum sites. So have the museums been amicable to help with this? Because I that was staggering to me, that statistic. It, exactly, because, all right, museums, I work in a museum, Museums want their collections known about and they want their collections used. So many of many museums don't have their collections even digitized, let alone digitized and put onto their website. But all of those websites are separate from each other. So to see the Henry Ford Museum's collections, for instance, you'd have to go on Henry Ford Museum's site, except for now they have them on their site, but also in the quilt index. So as our, our over almost 2000 quilts are at, at Michigan State University are on the quilt index. So you can see both of those and actually many, many, many more museum collections on the quilt index all at the same time. I and- I love this. Yeah, so, so you know, massive amount of data here. So how do we break that data down into uh, elements that we think people want to investigate? Well, some people are only interested in seeing the quilts. You just mentioned like you want to get inspired. So maybe you don't even care about who made it, who owns it, or the story. You just want to see the visual information. So right. That's uh, the one of the primary ways that we break this down is by quilt image, by the story, by the artist, because we're trying to pay tribute to, again to mostly the women who have made these quilts. And then we pr provide access to collections. So this is just a slide to show the basic um, breakdown areas. Now, who decided who decided these? Because I know sometimes like even on our website at thequiltshow.com to even come up with the categories is a whole thing in itself. Yes. And in the beginning of the quilt index, you know, we had a lot of user feedback. Um, okay. Is, is this working? Is that working? How would you like to access this? Gotcha. And back to the museums. Of course, the museums would like to be able to go directly to isolate their collections in the, right. in the quilt index. Yeah. I'm going to go look at my own kids. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Now, so I want to say this, you guys. I love this. Um, both um, 
both Marsha and I love our red felt tip pens, so pay attention. <laughs> yeah. And I work very, very carefully on this. <laughs> Uh, so yes, yeah. so then here's the navigation bar. You can go right to the documentation projects. So um, I think I looked, I, I just showed you, you go, um, if you wanted to go to the Michigan Quilt Project or to any one of the other documentation projects in the States, you just drop down to documentation projects and then you, you know, start scrolling. Over to the right, though, you see there are sorts. And so there. this is where you're going to have fun after we do this, like, 101, Quilt Index 101. You can just play around with sorts. So you can sort projects by, you know, they're, they're A to Z or Z to A. But, like, so, you could put in, like, log cabin, and all the log cabins would come up type deal you're talking about? Gosh, yes. And, okay. And by the uh, there are a lot of log cabin quilts in here. Okay, but yeah. I mean, for example. <laughs> for example. You might want to choose a more obscure uh, quilt pattern because, yeah. Anyway, okay, so why don't you go to the next slide? All right, thank you. Oh, is that that next one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Our, yeah, so then once you click on a project, then you have the option to uh, go and click something that says view all records in this project. And that will bring up a display page like this that doesn't look completely full. So you look down at the bottom and you say load more. <gasps> and you keep loading more because sometimes people will bring up the first page and they'll think, oh, you know, that project only has what, 20, 30 quilts in it, but actually, that project might have 10,000 quilts. That's important. It. And it's probably like when you, you know, you get catalogs online, they only load 30 at once, or you'd be sitting there for a half hour while the whole thing loads, right? Exactly like that. Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, did we just do that one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So then what you can do is you can um, click on that one image and it will bring up a large record which actually reflects the kind of information that was either in the documentation record or inventory form that was used by any one of those quilt documentation projects across the country actually around the world or it might reflect the data that is in the catalog record of a museum how much of this is like uh, Wikipedia, where it's out people putting things in there, or does everything come from you guys? It all, well, it doesn't all come from us. It comes through the quilt project itself or from the museum. We're just the vehicle for presenting the information. So um, the data, it, it it at the moment is not what you might call crowdsourced. It 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 simply is what a museum has given us or what a document. Okay, gotcha. So Wikipedia is crowdsourced. Never heard that before. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Love this. Yeah. So then here's just a random sample, just so you can see how you can uh, see the quilt whole. And in some cases, we do provide details, uh, at least a few details. And I should note that you might get frustrated that you can't like count the stitches in some of these oh. images, but we do not put up publishable images. We, we want to protect the rights. Sometimes people even watermark their images. So you can't just download and copy this. You, all of this data is owned by whoever has allowed us to present it here. So it's, it is, the, the rights to everything doesn't re reside at the quilt index. It resides with the museum, the individual artist, or gotcha. the coordinator. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So now my screen is a little um, uh, uh, small for me to read this, but what do I have circled? You have there? circled museums. Okay. Yeah. So. So you drop down, you can see museums, and 
again over to the right hand side you can see how you can sort all of the museum collections oh, that are in there and and you right now we i i think i this screenshot i put it um the sub selections was uh, arrange it from the largest collection to the smallest collection okay and so of course that's why you see the international quilt museum collection okay um, okay goes and then Michigan State has the second uh, largest collection right now. Um, so I did not know that. Um, is, if somebody wanted to see the quilts at Michigan State, do they have a rotating exhibit or anything like that? Um, not really. We, okay, we'll move we, on. <laughs> we, we do occasionally, but we loan, <laughs> loan a lot of Okay, quilts. okay. Okay, so then we have lots of tools to help you find what you want. I mean, 90,000 quilts, roughly, 90, <laughs> yeah, is a lot. It's overwhelming, actually. And so you need ways in which you can help narrow this down. But you also need tools for finding what you want. And so we've got different ways of searching. And here's a screenshot just to show you some of the categories. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, and what's nice is there are some preset groupings that we have already instituted to help you find things. So uh, we have regular featured when we put new quilts in, but there's time periods. Some people are interested. Well, I only want to see 1840 18, to 1860. Yep. Yep. Or, or back to your log cabin. Maybe you only want to see a certain pattern. So there are I don't know how many uh, presets, and I think Log Cabin might, in fact, be one of those. So, so let's pretend like I have the most extraordinary Log Cabin on the face of the earth that came over on the Mayflower, and I know that it needs to be in your index. How, how Does somebody have to go through a museum, or what's the vehicle to get in there? Whoa, you just, you're just you just jumping right to the end of my presentation. Oh, okay, well then let's keep going, let's keep going. Okay, okay, there we go. But we're coming back to that, so you okay. don't want to forget that. Okay, so sorting, that's another way of, of finding a thing. So look over on the circled uh, uh, right-hand side, and you can see different kinds of sorts, which, you know, you can sort of maker, A to Z, Z to A, date, pattern name. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So documentation projects the same way. It's almost like my brain's exploding. I've got to tell you, it's it's just you've got to get in there and play because it's 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 too much. I mean, really, okay. right? Okay, here's one of my very very favorite things um, is that you can um, com compare and contrast images, and I think in that last one, uh, can you back up one slide? Absolutely. Okay. Let's see. That one? Yeah. Well, no. Go back sorry. another go, one? Go back another no, no, Go for it. Go for it. Okay. I actually think I got them in the wrong sequence. Uh, now, no, it probably could be me. <laughs> so. on, in the corner of every little icon, little thumbnail, there is a circle. And when you have a display of quilts, if you click on that circle and it becomes colored, then you can go over to um, something on the right hand corner that will say uh, compare and it will bring the those, those up. And so they will isolate just those two or three out of the 90,000. And then you can go back and click, you know, remove display and, and see another set. Who, but what's who, cool who, who built this site? I mean, this is in. These are people who are like deeply interested in making quilts and in studying quilts. Yeah, my colleague Beth Donaldson, Beth, right there. Yeah, she's she probably made like over two hundred. This just shows a sample artist page, like um, up at the top. If you instead of starting with quilts, just start with sure. artists. So Beth has put in here all images of all the quilts that she has made as well as quilts that she collected. And so uh, the, the, those are denoted by either she is listed as the artist or the owner. Okay, and here the next one. 
Oh, so this is a project that we're working on right now with, um, thankfully, to the National Endowment for the Humanities, a $350,000 grant that is enabling us to really ramp up the content in the quilt index that has to do with African and African diaspora quilts. And the reason we initiated this is because most of those quilt documentation projects, projects and most museums do not have African and or African American Interesting. quilts. Interesting. And, so, so the, and you know, that was because most of those documentation projects were started by white women. And yeah. so yeah. We're looking at white places. Right. So this, so I'm working with um, pretty much the, the, the body of, of museums in the country that have African American quilt collections, at least 10. Okay, cool, cool. But pretty in one one museum is the, the um, museum at Berkeley University um, of, of California. Uh huh. They just recently given the Eli. Eli. They have 3,000. 3, so when you sort eventually, you know, the, the, the museum that has the most quilts, Berkeley is going to show up way over probably um, the, the international. I just read about that the other day. I thought it was fabulous. Yeah. And last but not least. Uh, is this the last one? I think it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> like it or not. <laughs> uh, so this just shows some other uh, kinds of, of things that you can find in the, in the index, including historical photographs. We have, um, uh, like all of the Detroit news quilt column images are in there. We have, uh, you know, the collection of, of quilt photographs. Um, you know, so we have the American quilt study, uh, journals, uncoverings, uh, up to a certain point okay. in there. Okay. So, what so are, getting back to, I have the most magnificent log cabin in the world. Okay. Back to your question. Yes. Yeah. So there is a place on the quilt index, which is a uh, public submission. Now we just launched this about, um, uh, six months ago. So up until this point, you had to be, if you had a quilt, it had to be part of a documentation project or a museum collection okay. to go in, into this, or we had experimented with some grants, uh, to do some, uh, private collections. But now you, Alex, can sit at your computer right there and go to public submission. It's up at the top of the um, the navigation uh, tool is uh, add your quilt. And then you can go to submit your quilt and in a form pops up that you can print out and pre-populate, you know, hand write in things and then, or you can do it digitally on online and then upload pictures of your quilt, pictures of you and voila, you have entered your quilt into the quilt index. And yeah, we, it's like, it's a free thing. Although we do say we're like public radio or public TV that I was going to do that. This stuff doesn't happen for free. So how does that work? So we just simply have a suggested cost of, uh, or $10 per quilt. If okay. you upload, it's nothing. I mean, people pay more to get their quilts. Um, and quilt show. Yeah. Quilt shows. Okay. So are there other ways that people can um, help support this? I you've used the word grants several times, but do you take yeah. private donations? And in fact, there's a wonderful little dot, a little heart or a donate at the top navigation bar and that you can provide funds, um, online. Yeah. Well, Marcia, I, I, I want to, I want to thank you so much. And as I mentioned at the top of this, we were having some technical issues. And so, yay, because this is so it. important. It's so important. It really it is. is. And you know what we, when we developed this, we had, uh, couple of things in mind. We wanted people to be able to learn more about quilts. We wanted people to be able to do research 
about quilts, but we wanted people to be inspired too. So there you go. Had a hammer, nailed it. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much. And everybody knows I love California where I live. My my next state is Wisconsin, but Michigan, you are a close runner. Let me tell you right now. Love your beautiful hey. state. Oh, love it too. And yeah. hey, we're working with the California group and getting the quilt documentation project in. Oh, good. Good. Okay. Well, thanks so much and have a great rest of the day. Thanks, Alex. Thank so you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. This has been very... Mm-hmm. Good. Super. It's a mind blower, right? And I saw that some of you on the side here were like, oh, I'm looking there. And I mean, I had heard of it. I just, you know, I know Shelly Zegard. I just, one and one didn't make two for me. So Marsha McDowell, you are amazing. Marsha McDowell. And I stand corrected, Michigan State University. <laughs> John came running in too. <laughs> he put that, no, it's not, it's not the University of Michigan. Michigan State University. And the other thing I screwed up was I think I called it textile talks at the top. Okay, so that brings it to my cancer. <laughs> I am doing so well. I am doing so well. You can hug me tight. It doesn't matter. I don't hurt. Whoops, that's not good. But... I am exhausted. And so so I I had this big old weekend with my girlfriends and today I'm paying the price, you know. I didn't even go out drinking, right? So I just think what uh Marsha McDowell has put together is amazing. I love that our state has a very strong presence with this and I love that the museums are all playing together so beautifully. I just want to thank you guys so much for all that you're doing for for quilts. I mean, this is going to last forever, and it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So, Marsha McDowell, thank you. Also, I'm looking at you guys here. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, so Kathy, you came late. No big deal. Just go back and watch it again from the beginning. I had some funny stuff at the beginning. I and mean, this interview was a little bit long, but I feel it was totally, completely, 100% valuable. And honestly, I feel like we just, just scratched the surface, uh, you know? So you got to get in there and play like any website, like our website at thequiltshow.com and see what strikes your fancy. So, okay. So here's what's happening. Future forward. I did also work on my ties this weekend. Uh, we will be starting that soon. I promise you, Pinky Swear. We are going to see, or I am going, I got to preface that correctly, to go see Joey and Shelly's house outside Nashville this next week. And so we're going to tie all that stuff up and then we will get going on that. All right. I so appreciate uh, you guys showing up despite my flakiness. I, you, you just don't know what it means to me. Thank you so, so much. And I'm going to make sure that there's nothing else. Yes, I think we are good. And again, it's the quilt index. That's where you're going to want to go and get all this information. You know, pour yourself a cup of tea and surf in your house where it's cool, I hope. Bye.